All this is Dr. Mubin Sayyid and Paul Bork with me, a cool bean. You know him. He is an MBA. He is a lawyer. He is a BS in chemical engineering and a, a Six Sigma black belt as well. He does teaching as well, and that is why we will be together today and we'll have teaching about the stats. And I was uh, uh, cutting a joke. I said, today's day is fun day because I just have to sit around and say, hmm, 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 and then ask a couple of questions here and there. And he does all the work. So, Paul, welcome. Thank you. So, for the newer cool beans, tell us about yourself and then we'll start. Oh, I'm just the same guy I was before and just... uh, done a whole bunch of different things and just trying to pull some uh, uh, studies together and some data and present it with some discussions. And hopefully there'll be some points that are of interest and uh, things that uh, will help you understand better. All right, let's start. All righty. So... I was going to talk about Africa a little bit. And so I thought I would start with a uh, slide here from um, uh, Wikipedia that has the continents and the relative, uh, the, the, the area, the land area, and the population. And so you can get the percentage of them to just sort of understand as we talk about the countries and the continents and the different regions, how the pieces fit together. And going through the list here, and at the end, I have done what I do in a lot of things. I just took the ratio of them, and Oceania has the least uh, population relative to the land area. They have a half a percent of the population with 5% of the land area. So I set them equal to one. Antarctica doesn't have any permanent residents. And so from the Oceania one, South America and North America are about five times the density of uh, people per um, unit area of land, whether it's square miles or square kilometers or square feet or square furlongs or whatever unit you want to use. Um, Africa, or then uh, about 5%, then Africa has about uh, eight times the, the density of the Oceania and Europe about 15 and Asia about 21 times. And so if we take a look at where the population and the areas are, just to give uh, a sort of feel how everybody fits into the world. Does that make sense to anybody? Everybody, any questions on that? I love it. I, this is actually a very good way to contextualize the possibility of various cases and situations. Right. Well, well, thank you. I, I appreciate it when someone says we're not, uh, you know, COVID isn't over or, or SARS-CoV-2 or Wuhan virus, or whatever you want to call it, isn't over until it's over for everybody. Africa is 17, 15 to 20% of the world. And, and you know, so as we go forward, uh, we're going to, I'm now going to be focusing on Africa, which we haven't before, but just to give you the context of what sort of population uh, percentage in the world. So thank you. And so starting at the southern tip of Africa and working our way north, Uh, I've left Japan in for the uh, reference we've had before. They've now started to come over. But if you remember, they were the one way down on the um, graph with the U.S. and the U.K. much higher. And so the Southern Africans are reporting numbers much closer to what uh, Japan had than anybody else. Japan's cases have really gone up. Yes. Hmm. And now they're starting to come down a little. Yeah. Which is kind of characteristic of this wave right? Yes, it is. And this is also very, uh, it isn't covering a lot of time because some of these countries, uh, particularly, um, uh, let's see, I forget which one here, but a number of them would have real high peaks a little while ago. And to to see where it is now, I sort of cut the timeline off because we're really interested in what's happening right now. That's the focus of what we've had. Got it. And we have the countries and we have, I've, I pulled the, the uh, uh, numbers off and put it here because if you do the highlight, then it covers up the graph. And so I moved them out for us and made them a little bigger so it's easier to see. And so right now, South Africa is, um, has the highest number of all of them. Botswana 
didn't have one at the last. And so I skipped them and to get these other countries and get the la latest data. And so Botswana is, is about 200. But now, and then you can see where the other, other countries are. And um, some may say, well, Angola isn't reporting. But if you go back over time, Angola did have a fair amount of reporting before. And maybe they aren't reporting as well now. Just like there's complaints, the UK and the US aren't reporting as well as they were before. But th this is the shape uh, for the southern tip of Africa. Got it. And moving to the Central African countries. And in this case, I have India, which was higher than Japan because uh, these cases are higher. And um, here you can see where they are. And uh, India is much higher now than these others were, but you can see that there's a peak here that perhaps was the Omicron predating um, uh, the Indian. And this is Kenya, I believe. So uh, my apologies for my geography, which is not very strong. I thought India is on the in the East Asia. Yes, yes. India is here for a reference, just like Japan okay. was. Okay, I thought India went there. So sorry. No, okay. India is not not an African country. Okay. At least it's still moved. where it was. Yes, has hasn't moved. Okay. And here's the uh, going further north. Up on the top, we've got Libya, and again, I have India as the reference. Before in, in the last one, you saw that India was much higher, and now we have Libya that is uh, the highest one on the chart here. Then uh, or Libya, and then India, and so the other countries that we saw before would be down below, and here we have these coming down. So three hundred ninety-six point eight cases per million compared to India as a reference, thirty-two cases per million. Right. What's going on with Libya? Why? Anyways, that's a wave. Okay. It's a wave, and it's up and it's down very quickly. Yeah. And again, the time frame is pushed so that we have a, uh, you know, the the uh, India one now looks a lot more flattened out. But again, this one, I think it was Materius had a much higher peak and it would have made all these uh, much lower if I had uh, not shortened the timeline. Mm -hmm. And here I uh, expanded it even more, uh, the same group, so that uh, you can see where where the cases are going for this is and, northern African countries, right? So, and this and is also see, still cases per million. Yes, and you can also see that the, it's a lot uh, choppier some of the reporting. So there may be some yeah. uh, collection and reporting of cases uh, w rather than a continuous reporting of cases. Got it. And here's the Northwest Africa with India again as a reference. And almost so all of the everybody countries. Everybody is experiencing the wave. Yes. And you can see they got the wave before India got the wave. Mm. And they have lower numbers. Is that because of a different diet? Is that because of different reporting? Is that because of, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you look at the graph before, Libya was up there, like 300 something compared to this, right? right. So one more step be before if you go. Yeah, so if this is this is <clears throat> Libya here. Yeah, here. Look at this. So Libya, 396.8 cases per million. Right, and, and their, their, their peak up here above 500. Yeah. If we take and a they, look at... Uh, which I can't tell. I think this is mature. So you can see they were up above 400 here. Yeah. This is a good question. Paul says, will BA2 be another wave? Uh, we'll get to that. It's a good question. Okay. We're going to address okay. that in a little while. So hold on to that thought, Paul. Okay. And now I'm jumping to the European countries that we haven't covered, starting with Portugal and uh, right there in uh, at the uh, just north of Gibraltar, which we covered and going uh, 
going around uh, Europe, grouping them together. And you can see these cases before we were talking about 500. These are 5,000. And so again, um, is that uh, the disease progressing differently? Is that different reporting? Is that whatever? That's why I'm grouping them together in regional areas because whatever's going on, it's more likely to be consistent in the in the local region than it, than if we just randomly select countries. That's very interesting. The, that the numbers we saw before were in hundreds or units, and here is in thousands. Right. Hmm. Yes, and you can see different countries seeming to get the peak at different times. Greece coming up, and you see Greece leveled off. Hmm. Almost like the UK. Remember, they leveled off. Yeah. After and that makes speeches there. Right. And a number of the countries, but most of it, it seems to come up quickly and then come down. Hmm. And here's the US as a reference. Got it. There's the Omicron percentage. It's, it's exactly the same. Every place we look, it just takes off and gets all of it. No one is reporting that I have seen here, certainly on, on where I'm collecting the data, but I haven't seen anything really talking about the percentage of uh, BA2. Now, there was another podcaster that said that a, a Great Britain had apparently reported they were at 20 or 30%. BA2, and he thought it would have taken over just like Omicron did with Delta, but it has been much slower. Yeah, so the uh, remember that study that we discussed, it said slightly or certainly more transmissible. So I think that more transmissible is still up in the air that how much more? Yeah, the, the, the first number I heard was about 20%, and they were saying that Omicron was... Uh, what, 200% more transmittable than um, Delta. So you would expect the, the takeover, if there's only a 20% competitive advantage and everything else is the same, it won't be the same. But if it were, you would expect it to, to uh, go in at about a tenth of the speed. Yeah, I heard 20% as well. I may have heard it from you. <laughs> well, now we both have confirmed each other. <laughs> we are done. Here is science. <laughs> Yes, exactly. So a peer review you and say, oh, sounds just like what I heard before. Yes. Okay, just, here are some more countries. European countries. And if this is Luffy, he's not feeling really well. Yeah, he's grounded. He's not feeling well. Right. And you can see Serbia way, way up. And these numbers, though, are that the top of the peak is at 2,500. And if we go back to the, these are at 5,000. So we're at half the level here on the on the maximum. And it, what is it that's different in Bulgaria, the Ukraine, Hungary than is for, in in these other countries? Yeah. I don't know, but there's a huge difference, and they seem to group together. You know, is it yeah. a reporting issue? Is it a cultural issue? You know, where people don't go to the hospital or don't complain or do complain? I I don't know. Hmm. Check out a couple of comments here. One, Mark says the rates are very high in the UK. They're just not re reporting. And secondly, Samina says, what about Bangladesh? Uh, we reported Bangladesh before. They're not included today. Okay. So, Samina, I can pull up Bangladesh's number later on and we can look at them. And here we have the Omicron, and you see Bulgaria has the number coming down, just like Germany did once and somebody else. And then the next week, it jumped back up to where it should be. So again, I don't think that the percentage Omicron has gone down. I think they collected data consistently, and occasionally when you collect data, you get noise. And I think that's what it was. Hmm. And this is the last group of the Europeans with the US uh, left in for a reference, and the US now being the lowest. And even the peak that the U.S. has, Germany looks like they're getting about to the same level. Poland was uh, two-thirds of it. Chesnia coming up. Austria higher. Lithuania even higher. Netherlands way, way up. Netherlands, either they're doing real good reporting or there is something going on there. Right. And didn't they change their uh, requirements? 
maybe. I don't know. And Latvia, again, is, is about 5,000, but they're still coming up. And so, again, we see the U.S. had its peak earlier in time than these, than these uh, European countries did. Mm. Yeah, Netherlands is quite high. Yes. And here's the Omicron thing. And you notice here, this is... Uh, well, Lithuania had the report that came down here and then jumped back up. So again, this is probably just an error and it should have been someplace around here. So there's a quick question about Luffy because Luffy appeared in the graphs here. Is Luffy going to be grounded for the rest of his miserable life? So um, he has been going out. So for example, at this time, he just went out because he was really, really crying. So, but not at night. So at night, his life is miserable and our life is miserable until a catio comes in. But in the daytime, he can he can have fun. Today went out and all of a sudden he saw a squirrel and he makes those chirpy sounds like ee, ee, and he just kept doing that thing and looked like he was hunting and he didn't catch anything. But that is Luffy. Sorry, back to you, Paul. Oh, not a problem. Good to hear about Luffy. We'd asked about the UK, and here is the UK uh, case report going up to the 12th of February. And see, we have this double peak. The official UK numbers are coming down, but the reporting isn't there. And it looks like we're getting not just a, a coming down and leveling off, but a second peak. And is this the uh, Omicron 2 or the BA2? And if we go to the current Zoe app, they changed the formatting over so that the curve looks different. But you can see it's really the same curve, just spread out and chunked down so that you don't see the, uh, the you know, the very low places where the, uh, where the UK was. I have a question from Colin. Is there a correlation with percent vaccination? Well, the percent vaccination in the UK has been pretty much the same through, the, through this whole thing. Uh, if we look at various countries, uh, I did not look at the vaccination rates, but uh, the African countries seem to have a lot less vaccination and seem to be having a lot, reporting a lot lower cases and a lot lower deaths. And one can say that they're underreporting or that's all that's happening. But, um, you know, all, all we have is the data here. I, you know, we can't go out and do a survey or look at people or whatever. So... I don't know whether there is a correlation, but certainly what's happening in the UK, if that's what you're talking about, there was no significant change in vaccination rates between the 6th of January and the 8th of February. And also in timing, there wasn't six months ago a huge increase in vaccination rate. So if the vaccination is waning, we, I wouldn't expect there to be a significant difference in the amount of waning in, in the 30 days. Agreed. And here's the United States, Japan, and uh, the UK. And primarily to show J Japan's peak and coming down here. And we had something talking, I think you reported something talking about the uh, diet difference and uh, some of the uh, uh, biome in, in, inside the uh, people that there may be a difference and uh, it may be making a huge difference in how COVID pro uh, progresses, and certainly this is consistent. You can also see the timing that the UK started it started uh, among these three countries. The US was just a little behind, and Japan was roughly the same distance behind the US as the UK was behind, or that the US was behind the UK, but it's, the slope was a lot less, and the, so that the, the disease progression in the country was less almost as if something were resisting it or to be consistent with the what we heard about the uh, biome and perhaps the drugs that are being produced by the uh, uh, bugs inside the gut that are helping treat the disease. Got it. And here we have there's a couple of countries, but this is really the last thing. And this is the thing that we had had before, where it looks like the number of cases has really uh, separated right at this point. 
not when the Omicron came in, but right here with the Delta for the UK. And so this is what we had looked at before that saying that the comparing Delta to Omicron and looking at the ratio of them and setting the cases equal to one. And here they set them all equal to one and the timing they set the same. And so if we look at the peaks here, and so that's right under the peaks, looking at the relative ratio, the cases will be one, but it says that there was only 73% as much uh, hospitalization as one would expect. And only 44% as many in the ICU and um, 84% of the deaths. So Omicron was a little better uh, with respect to the uh, for, for dying, but now it, the cases have gone on a little further. And one of the questions I asked myself is what, where are we now? Are these case, you know, the, the cases are coming down, the patients are coming down, the deaths a little bit and ventilated a little bit. When it says ICU, should be ventilation for the UK. That's how they report it. Uh, have they come down in a proportionate amount? And if we take a look, you can see they have not. The cases, everything has come down, but relative to the case rate coming down and where the cases are now, and perhaps there's under-reporting, hospitalization is 40% higher than it was at the peak for every case. So it means if there were 100 people who, you know, if we have uh, at the peak, we had a certain number of people that were uh, hospitalized. And if 100 of them or a certain number of cases and from those cases, 100 people were hospitalized right now for that same number of cases, we'd have 144 hospitalized. You'd have that is very interesting. So you are actually telling me that at this time after the peak, the hospitalizations are more, or ICU are more, or deaths per are more. Per case, right? Per case. For per case. yes, so relevant, re related to the case. So I have a question for you, and I've been thinking about it since you showed it to me before. Could this be that the hospital cases and hospitalizations are actually offset? So is it that we are looking at these hospitalizations, which were actually because of the peak? but they were admitted to hospitals or became aggravated by now? I think no, because if that were true, then the shape of the curve would be over. If, if all that happened was the patients were in the hospital later, we would see this peak come up later on. We wouldn't see it peak, Correct. they peak right under. The peak seemed to mm -hmm. be fine. Ventilation didn't seem to have a peak, but the deaths seemed to come up right at the right time, right under it. So it looks like the offset they did to originally set it is still correct in terms of when people die, when people go to the hospital compared to when cases are reported. The timing seems to be consistent. Now, again, so, the, the ventilation seems to have changed, and that may just be different uh, procedures in terms of not putting people on ventilators. I don't know. So... So let me then, uh, so Cool Beans, hear this out. I don't know if you are, uh, you, you saw this. What Paul is showing is that compared to the Omicron's peak, current Omicron cases versus hospitalizations, ICU and deaths, the ICUs and hospitalizations and deaths are more to the, as related to the number of cases versus at the peak time. Right. And is this something going on with the disease or is this something for reporting? Well, the hospitalization and the ventilation here are strangely the same. And so it could be that if they're underreporting the cases, that actually the hospitalization and ICU are the same and the deaths may actually be further down. So again, it's hard. It's, we can't tell. We only have the numbers that have been reported. But they're both 40%. And so it may well be that simply these cases should be higher. Makes sense. Okay. And if we, there's a few countries that they have done this for. And if we look through each of them, if we look at the U.S., you can see the U.S., the tracking of the, the them have continued, haven't been separated like they are in the, uh, in the U.K. And if we if I go to this one here, and we have the same thing here that we had a 40, you know, for every, it, it, for every 
uh, looking at Omicron and Delta, if we had the same number of cases, uh, we would have 48% or a 52% reduction in the hospitalizations, a 62% reduction in ICU, and a 66% reduction in the dead, that we would have a, a third of them. But if we do the same thing we did with the UK, pull that off and show you the same relative one. If we now take a look at the number of cases and set that equal to one, and then look at how many hospitalization, ICU, and deaths we have compared to where it was on the peak, we're two times for hospitalizations, two times for ICU, and three times for deaths in the U.S. It must be underreported cases. Uh, I can't understand. So either the variant has become more um, virulent or the cases. Right. And again, just like the UK, hospitalization and ICU are roughly two. There's the same number, almost like the US is reporting half the number of cases that are going on. And the UK was reporting, you know, was 40% down. But why are the deaths, even if that's a reporting issue, the deaths then are going, and if it should be two, it's still one, uh, you know, it's still going to be a third higher than what it should be. So there could be, again, for the US, I can say maybe in some hospitals, it is related to the hospital, the pressure on the hospital. Plus, we have a little less health, um, little our health is a little more deteriorated as compared to other countries, but we have more comorbidities. Maybe that is the case. But take a look at the shape of this confirmed deaths. Okay, let's see. I think I can even blow this up, make it a little bigger. I got to turn this off. And I think I can turn my pointer back on. Only one at a time, all right. So if we take a look here, you can see that the deaths went up, but haven't come down. You know, patients have gone up and down, confirmed deaths, or, or hospitalizations up and down, cases up and down, symmetrical, but the deaths have, this is, if this is the peak, they're not coming down, they're staying flat. Something different is happening. I don't think it's just a reporting, under-reporting. That would cause I mean, we know that uh, deaths do not occur one to one. They take four to six weeks, unfortunately, for a person to die of it. Right, but if we if we go back, if we go back to the whole curve here, and if I pull this back off, come on, you can see that the time offset has been <laughs> just right all the way up, and then suddenly something different is occurring right now that didn't oh. occur with the Delta and didn't occur with the original. Something mm -hmm. is different for deaths. So, something is killing people that wasn't before mm -hmm. consistently yeah. in the US. Yeah, makes sense. I understand what you're saying. So exactly why it is happening is not known. We need to dig into it, but there is a difference compared to previous waves. Right, and it could also be a reporting if they've changed what counts as a death. If they're saying everyone who died with COVID is now, if they changed it right at the peak, if there was some something reporting, it may be that there aren't more people dying. But if all the definitions are the same, this is saying that there's some people dying now that weren't dying in the first half of the Omicron peak, on this, this side of the peak. You know, the folks yeah, that were dying yeah. for cases and the people on this side, there's more people dying for whatever reason. Now, is it that, that folks are being held up in the ICU longer than they were before because of the sort of disease progression that it starts in the upper respiratory and it takes longer to get down into the lungs? And so this time frame gets pulled out, you know, that, that could be. But if that's true, why wasn't it seen in the other countries? Why didn't we see it in the UK? Why don't we see it in South Africa? There's a question uh, from, uh, where is that question? DJ is saying, what are nurses and doctors seeing in hospitals? So at least my doctor friends say that they are seeing more pressure of the cases, 
if they do come in the hospitals, they are discharged earlier and with less severe outcomes. But of course, I'm sure that this data is coming from hospitals as well. Now, could, could it be that we're, what we're seeing is that the people in the hospitals are uh, thinking Omicron is just the flu and they're discharging people that should not have been discharged and, pre, and, and, and before the peak, they would have taken a more, the cases more seriously and they're discharging people that should have been treated. I mean, and is this possible that there are uh, folks who, are, who have comorbidities or are in, are in advanced age their vaccine efficacy has waned and now they are becoming exposed to the virus. Or it could also be that there's nothing the healthcare people are doing differently, but the population is hearing that, hey, Omicron is nothing, it's just a flu, forget about it, and they're not coming in until some of them couldn't be saved where before they came in earlier. I mean, that could be. Mm. Mm. Bambi says... um, Patients admitted la- latest daily, 1,096, reported on Saturday, 12 February, 2022. Patients in hospital, 12,092. Patients on ventilation beds, 354. Yeah, ventilations are really low. But unfortunately, that has no bearing on the number of deaths. Sorry, back to you, Paul. Not a problem. Then if we take a look at Spain. The same sort of thing. And, and, and Spain was, you know, the, the, the cases jumped way up here with Delta and went up here. And if you look at the deaths for, and let me blow that up again. I like these little things that you get to do. You can see that the confirmed deaths are coming down. They're not, fl- it's not the same shape in the U.S. where it's flattening off. And if we go back and go to Spain here to do this over here. All right. And so we have the cases. And again, we have 60% of uh, for every 100 cases uh, that we had in the in the Delta, we only had 60. um, For every 100, we only had 60 go to the hospital for every 100 that were ventilated. We only had 36. And for every 100 that would have died under the Delta per case, we only had uh, 70, 68 percent. And if we take a look at where the current is versus the peak, we see something somewhat similar. Hospitalizations up 44 percent. Ventilations roughly even and deaths twice what they are. Not as high as the U.S., but still, I don't think that Spain is underreporting. I mean, not having consistent shifts in each of these things. So to answer, address the question that we were asked earlier, is BA2 different? It certainly has some data to support the idea that the outcomes um, and the hospitalization, the ventilation, the ICU, the deaths are different than it was with um, the Omicron A. If the Omicron A or the BA1 was the first half of the wave, and as it's coming down, if we start getting cases in, uh, are we seeing this difference? And frankly, if we only have 20, 30 percent of BA2 and we're doubling the death rate, um, when we get all BA2, it could be something very significant. Hmm. So Margaret says, who are the patients that are dying long-term hospitalizations? We, I don't think we have that data, right? I don't. Hmm. Margaret, that is a good, good question. I think we'll have to drill down in the data at some point. But we don't have that data here. And we have Israel, the same sort of thing with, uh, with Israel going down. And again, Israel seems to be tracking very well the time aspect. Look at their deaths. Uh, Again, I'll blow that part up for us. You can see their deaths going up and down, same shape as the ICU. In fact, their deaths seem to be occurring faster than the ICU admissions or the patients in hospital relative to where it was before. So so it's still not saying that the deaths are are occurring before the ICU admissions. It's saying that if we go back to the original graph, 
where we moved everything to the timing of the uh, wild or Wuhan uh, virus, that maybe the deaths are occurring a little sooner relative to the infected cases at that time. And the same thing with the ICUs admissions. And the, the ICU and the patients seem to be the same, but deaths seem to be a little earlier. So it may be saying that if people are dying, they're not taking as long in time to die after they get infected, the majority of them, as occurred in the prior waves. And you can see here, with it, it looks a little earlier also here for the, um, for the Delta wave in Israel. It looks like the deaths are a little. So it may be that the deaths in the original wave, the timing was a little different than what we saw in other countries. Dynamics are definitely changed. Margaret said, what are the treatment modalities? That also may be a uh, role in all of this. This is interesting. So Salm says, an unidentified variant? I don't think so. If there was a variant that was doing this, we would all be all over it. Because right. the sequence happens. Sorry. Right. I don't have the numbers here for Israel like I did for the other countries. And the reason for that is because not enough time has passed. If you see where the deaths are, the deaths are very, very close to the peak. We don't, we don't have uh, data that goes down to see if, you know, like we did in the other countries, well past the peak. And so the, the analysis really can't be done on uh, Israel simply because the timing isn't there. Hmm. John says in the U.S., and sorry, uh, let me bring you up here so you're not covered by the question. In the U.S., could the discrepancy in number of deaths be due to how and when states report deaths? In other words, not a very centralized data reporting and therefore lagging at a different time. I mean, it, it certainly could be that, but... Why has it changed now versus originally going through all the different phases and then suddenly it's different today? That that doesn't seem quite right to me. Mm. I, 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 and and I'd, given that each of the counties has their medical advisor doing it, to have a coordinated shift occur across enough of the U.S. to affect the national numbers, that, that seems unlikely. Yep. And here we have the same thing with Germany, and we also have that, you know, their, their peak. We don't have the post-peak numbers to take a look at here. So, of the countries that we had, if we go back up, um, you know, Spain has a significant difference. The U.S. significant difference. Here, I'll pull this down. Let's see where's. Sorry, I put that back up. U.S. has a significant difference. U.K. has a significant difference. And so all of the countries that, that, that this analysis have been pulled together that we can look at, are see, we're seeing that there is a significant difference in the seriousness of the cases going on now versus what occurred at the peak of the Omicron. Now, it's, it's not saying that it's as, as severe as it was during the Delta. Because if, if you take a look, uh, you know, we had a twofold the ratio here with Omicron uh, versus, uh, yeah, yeah so, so it was a twofold de de decrease and it's only a 40% uh, increase. So it's not going back up to where Delta was. But it is a significant move in that direction. Hmm. So a couple of comments. One, Bambi says, 199 deaths in last 24 hours, last seven days, 1,086 deaths within 28 days of a positive test, 1.6 deaths per 100,000, according to government mm -hmm. dashboard. And the second comment, so Bambi, thank you, is Judy, everyone is thinking it, it why not say it us is messing with the numbers to make it high fear factor or they didn't get the memo i don't know if they can just play with the numbers like that back to you, uh, Paul. Uh, 
given even the, the, if one wants to buy into the the uh, mainstream media being supportive and political there's enough other people out there i think if there was some widespread conspiracy that it would not continue and and, and wouldn't be enough to to be reflected in the national numbers but mm. Colin Hummel says, in, is all cause mortality any different? So we, I, I was looking at some data um, for Denmark today. And that is an interesting question. I think we'll dig into it another time. Um, Alquin says, excess deaths will reveal if that, that is the case. Do we have any all cause data here? Seems like that should be a separate topic anyways. Yeah, I, I did not collect it for this, but yeah. we can collect it. I was trying to take what we had done before and finish going around the, the world, and yeah. we, are, we are done with our world tour. This is perfect. Um, adding more would only add to the length of the video as well. But we can start, we can look at, uh, for the next time, we can look at all cause mortality and see if we're seeing, you know, what sort of effects we're seeing in the various countries. Hmm. Svetlana says, new death. One week average in Israel is 0 0.542 per 100,000. US is 0 0.87, which is not that different, although vax rates are quite different. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you, Svetlana. And the, the age is much different. The average age of the US is much higher than it is in Israel. Israel is one of the youngest countries around. Hmm. So you would think that the you that the Israel would have much lower death rate than uh, from this disease that uh, is fortunately passing on most of the young folks. This is also an interesting comment. Uh, if, I don't know if the U.S. is messing with the numbers the way you think. I think the U.S. has the worst treatment protocols and hence people are more likely to die. I think people have more comorbidities as well. And yes, you're correct. The management side is also lacking. Sorry, back to you, Paul. Uh, that's what I had to present. Excellent. Thank you very much. So what is your take? What is your summary of it? My summary is that uh, it may be a little premature to say that Omicron is the vaccine that we should have made and it's going to end everything and we're going to have no other concerns or no other problems. But it is not the vaccine that we thought it may be. There's at least a question. Again, it, it doesn't yeah. prove, you know, like, like most things, you know, as they say, you know, you can get early information, you can get good information, but you can't get good early information. Yeah. And we're in a mode of, uh, for early, and uh, it seems like uh, we don't really have uh, a, a good idea of what exactly it, uh, it, it, it means. Hmm. And Joel, this is a good question with COVID or from COVID. And I think that is a discussion going on at, in Denmark at this time, because since they opened up the society, the cases have shot up, the death rate is increased as well. So then the discussion is, are more people dying because of COVID or they just have COVID as well? So <laughs> we are going to go drill down a little more on that maybe tomorrow. Uh, actually, tomorrow we have Dr. Z with us. So I'll, I'll find a time to do that. And the other thing is, Samina had said to discuss Bangladesh. So if you don't mind, Paul, I'm quickly going to bring up Bangladesh. So this is Bangladesh. The, the wave is actually coming down just like a similar model as others. It started somewhere in January, five, six time frame, and it is coming down by now, Feb 15. So about a month. But it also appears, if you go back up, it appears that the Omicron wave was not significantly higher than the Delta wave in Bangladesh. Correct. Correct. Almost slightly low. Was it higher for other countries? Yes, much, much higher. For example, this is UK. This is See UK. How much higher it is? Yeah, look at this. Yeah, it is much, much higher, as you said. Even when it is coming down, it is still higher than the other waves in the UK. So yeah, right. interesting that Bangladesh went down even before breaking the record for the previous waves. Right. And you also notice that Bangladesh was down to all, practically zero where the UK did not do that. They had, they had Omicron take over from the Delta. So maybe what 
if if the UK didn't have Omicron so soon, their Delta wave might have gone higher, just like mm. Bangladesh. I don't know. Yeah, that's a very interesting observation that UK actually went from a wave to wave and Bangladesh almost got reset and then had the wave. And let's see the confirmed deaths. So deaths are not, of course, as high as the previous waves. And these are going down as well. Looking good on Bangladesh side. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Dan Robinson says China's <laughs> numbers are amazing. Yes, Dan, <laughs> have fun. China is okay. Uh, Keeney says my husband was 25 days in hospital, 10 days ICU, November, December, heart, not COVID-19, but you tested for COVID and admittance to hospital, no matter what you're there. That is correct. So incidental findings are there. At the same time, I called my doctor and I said, I tested positive and uh, should I should I go and get tested? And he said, no. So I was not counted. Right. But I think I think a number of places have said that half of the we heard in South Africa and I think I heard it in the UK that half the cases they're reporting were incidental for people going in. So what is the good news in Oklahoma? The attorney general said he's going to allow people to prescribe if it's uh, approved and he is not going to get between a doctor and his decision to prescribe ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine. Which is how the the actual medical practice should be. It is, Nipa, thank you very much for sharing it. And it is kind of a sad thing that our country has come to this point that this kind of uh, reduction in intervention is become a welcome and uh, good news. This, this should have things, been the normal. Yeah, well, I don't know. But one of the things I'm wondering is, did the licensing bureau or some doctor that was being disciplined address the attorney general and ask him to weigh in and basically say the law that says doctors can prescribe off label is still effective in Oklahoma? Yeah, maybe. So I'll have to read up on that. But that is that is how it should have been. That hey, there is a patient and here is a doctor, and if they are fine with their uh, management, then that is about it. Doctor right. has and trained. It, and they... it's, it's difficult when there's interaction, but from my perspective, the law and the licensing says what doctors can be punished for and what they can do. The attorney generals are elected officials representing the people of the state. They should have been out in front, tell, knocking down anyone who was trying to interfere with a doctor's legal right to prescribe off-label and to treat their patients the way they saw fit. This should have happened all across the board. And I, I, I'm very happy to hear that Oklahoma has an attorney general that's doing his job. Correct. Too bad it and, took so long, but I'm happy yes. that, he, that he did. Yep. So let me uh, present something here. For doctors, we have come to the point, the administration, to a point where they are writing letters to say that they are providing misinformation and they are not practicing correctly. And if they talk outside, they are um, they're practicing medicine out of their realm. How about everyone saying, go get a vaccine? The newscasters, the talking heads, the FDA people, the statisticians, whoever is coming up and saying, go get a vaccine. Aren't they practicing medicine? Yes. I mean, vaccine is a good thing or a bad thing. What gives the same right that is taken away from a doctor, the same right to a talking head? A right. pundit, or a politician. Or I'm going to practice medicine. Why don't we, someone who's doing fact-checking on some social media. Yeah. Why, why don't we then at that time send letters to the uh, CNNs and Foxes and others? So I'm not being political here. Why don't we send a message there and say, stop your people from practicing medicine? Why don't we do it for the politicians? And, and, and literally, it should also occur if someone is saying you should take an ivermectin or you should take a... Uh, alcohol, or you should do any of the things. It should apply across the board. I agree. Yeah, and I want to show you this thing. This is such you. I always I know that Cool Beans are aware of this. I have discussed it before as well. 
but I always find this interesting. YouTube medical mis misinformation policy. And if I open this, it is it blows my mind. So we've been talking about this for for months now, but it always blows my mind that they have actually put the words in writing. They've said, I mean, you don't put other drugs. You say this kind of a drug or don't do this. Here, the words are in writing. Content that recommends use of ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of COVID-19. Claims that hydroxychloroquine is an effective treatment for COVID-19. Categorical claims that ivermectin is an effective treatment of COVID-19. Claims that ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine are safe to use in the treatment of COVID-19. Content that recommends use of ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. The thing is this, if we talk about safety and efficacy, we are they going to add now about some vaccines as well to say if you claim that the vaccine is effective after 25 weeks you are causing danger or if you claim that a booster is effective after let's say 16 weeks or 20 weeks that is a dangerous thing don't say that they don't do that this this is what makes me mad that this is medical practice happening right in front of us Anyways, uh, sorry, I get fired up with these things. Uh, anyways, uh, Nipa, thank you very much for sharing about Oklahoma. Oklahoma, They did something that they didn't have to. That should have been the normal thing. But when there is so much darkness, then they, they lit a light. And, and I know that the attorney general simply said that they can't, that, that it, they can't get interfered with it. He didn't advocate for or against it. So his particular broadcast doesn't violate the YouTube policy. That's actually a very, very interesting point. <laughs> I was actually yesterday looking at some of the ivermectin discussions on YouTube, and it is all very, very interesting. There are so many people who have talked YouTube who are in millions of views uh, who've talked ivermectin and they're fine. And there are people like me, for example, I am myself seen it, 53 videos struck down and one permanent, uh, Dr. Corey's video, permanent um, strike given as well. So they themselves do not have any, uh, what should I say, consistent application of their own policies. They have written it so that if they ding someone, that someone cannot say that, hey, what did you do? Right. M my bet is it's based on complaints. They probably don't go out looking for the problem, but if someone complains, they respond. Correct. And then they have written these things so that when they respond and take something down, now they can say, well, that's a policy. Okay. So, Paul, thank you very much. Uh, 54 minutes of your time, lots of data that you have pulled together, put it together, made sense of it, or in some cases said this is not understandable yet. So, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. And Cool Beans, thank you very much as well. So as I said yesterday, I'm going to be figuring out where to move the chit chats and live talks. So I am working on that. I would not do a live talk today. I'm exploring Rumble and other places. So hopefully soon I would create that structure and we'll resume a normal activity. But I would see you tomorrow with Dr. Z. Thank you and bye-bye.